And this is just the start of the canal towards the main event of today, a fantastic aqueduct. So we start today's video in a bit of a random place. I'm on an abandoned road. This isn't John, this isn't auto shenanigans. But this road runs just alongside the Wilson Bites Canal, which is just over on that tree line there. If you're local to the area, you'll know quite how good this road was. It was a temporary road put in when they were doing work on the railway, which is just there as well. And they decided to, while the bridge was closed, they decided to put a new road in so the main road traffic could come round. Unfortunately, after it was all done, they closed the road and now we're just left with this. But it is a good access point for the Canal Trust to get to the canal, which is just down here. So we're at the first signs of the canal now. Uh, we've just come up the track there from the road I mentioned. The canal runs through here. That's towards uh, Chippenham and off towards Malksham and the Kennington Avon. And this way is towards Swindon and off up to eventually to Abingdon and the River Thames. This section here would have had Dunnington Top Lock in. We can't get to that, that's completely overgrown. But this would have been the, a bridge going across, which is Triples Lane. And this leads down and around into some fields. Now, years ago when the canal was being built, just over here, there was a brickworks. And they're not entirely sure on the exact location. They've not dug it out. But all the maps and all the info and the invoices that they can find state it was down this lane and in this field. Now, they used to make bricks quite often where they were being used. And this area alone had a bridge, uh, a lock, another bridge up there, footpath over there. You've got another lock down here, an aqueduct, uh, and another bridge further down, as well as a road bridge as well. Next up down that way would be seven locks, and uh, further up that way you go into sort of Chaddington and the locks up there. So they would have possibly transferred to the other areas as well. It was much cheaper to build a brickworks, use the locally sourced materials that you dug out, the the earth clay and stuff like that to build the bricks and it was it was roughly here somewhere and then just up around here we start to walk on the canal now this isn't an area that's open to the public this is owned by i think it's oxford uni it's certainly a university up that way they bought the land for potential because there's hopes that they're going to build houses on here and uh, this land just over here is, is where they'll be so here's the canal as you can see it's been filled over for a farm track. The canal line is here and we've got the towpath here so I'm going to cut across here. So the reason why I'm here and I'm filming in this awful weather is there's very limited access to this site. Now the trusts have an agreement with the landowners to visit here several times a year to maintain stuff and you see how overgrown that is over there this would have been the same as well as bits over there. So the aim of the trust at the moment isn't to dig the canal out, but to get it to a point where it's all clear. So the canal drops down towards the Kennet and Avon from here. Swindon, sort of Chaddington, in fact, which is just up there, is the summit of the canal. Although that's gonna change that with the new route of the canal. That was the original summit. So this would have been the bottom lock here. You can still see all the old bricks. Here, look. So this was excavated in the 90s and they dug it right out. They found the uh, base of the, the, of the locks. Uh, these were destroyed by sappers in the war, in the Second World War, as practice for demolition going over to France. The trust haven't kept this bit open because it seems safer to allow it to be filled and, and grown over rather than having a, an accessible ditch with quite high walls there really. But there are, as you come out of the lock here, you can start to see the embankment sort of coming through. And this, this embankment would have led up into the lock. And there is, you can see water in the bottom there. There's some better views further down. I don't know how much you can see from here. But this all leads into where the trust are concentrating their work at the moment. So Hi, I'm Steve Baker and I chair the local branch, uh, Wood, Royal Wood and Bassett branch of the Wiltshire Barts Canal Trust and I've been involved with the uh, work parties for some years now and over the years we've gradually cleared along the embankment towards the Dunnington Aqueduct uh, and gone to the far end of the farm. Uh, you can get along all the way on the foot on the towpath, the footpath, 
except that you it's private land you need to have a license we have a license to work on wednesdays in the winter period it's a great effort by the team so although it's not being restored it's it's allowing access to the canal the clearing of the canal to prove what can be done with this canal and to try and get the the council developers all on board to get this done now the developers who uh, have the land are very keen to put the canal back in so hopefully if, if this side of the town is built on then we're going to we're going to end up with a, a canal line here which doesn't leave much between here and the Templars first sections which are already in water. It's always very difficult to see on these cameras because every 360 you've got a fisheye lens on each side and it does distort images quite a bit and it, it doesn't give a great view of, of further away but just here you can imagine mooring your boat up here a view through there you've got the church in the background Royal Wooten Bassett over there It'd be a fantastic place to be as a boater and what a wonderful place to walk down through as well joining kind of Lynham area sort of onto Royal Wooten Bassett into Swindon as a commuter route for cyclists and all sorts it's just so much potential as a route but you can see the land's banking down now we're on a we're on an embankment here and the reason why is the stream down there I'm not going to get down this side but that is where we're heading for today you can see all the usual traits of the Wilson Bites Canal Trust you've got dead hedging hedge laying and that going on up here so they're not just here clearing everything they're creating habitat these piles of wood here will be full of life and they're dotting around all down this route and on the other side over there as well I'm so sorry about the wind I, I, I need to take this opportunity to film this today because there's not many opportunities to get here the immediate problems in this area are vast and timber in this direction so vast and wharf and there's a lane up there was once part of the canal since the canal's closure in 1914 that's become quite successful timber merchants and whilst the canal line exists i'm not sure how easy it's going to be to to sort of access and build that line through through that uh, timber wharf and then in that direction there other than the obvious m4 crossing which hopefully will get a resolution in the next couple of years there is the fact that they've got to get past a little industrial estate they've got the council yard which Wiltshire Council being good old Wiltshire Council don't seem keen to let the canal have despite being a great opportunity for a visitor centre moorings and all sorts up there it'd be great for the local economy I can't understand why they don't sort of uh, want it we have some water in here you can see the clay bed seems to be holding quite well this is not connected as I say this is the end of how far I can go but we're going to come back across the north side of the canal and have a look at the aqueducts I'm hoping if, it, if the stream's not too bad you might notice I'm in waders I can get in and have a little look around it there's a group of walkers on an open day just ahead who are going to sit and watch me to make sure I'm okay so the advantage of course of any sort of developments alongside any restoration is that often the developers if they're smart enough some don't seem to see it want to put the canal in because canal side properties sell for more money so the hope is when this happens if it if it does this will get put in it'll save the trust a lot of money and they're not it's not the trust behind the development they're taking advantage of the fact that the development is going to go through that section no one wants to see houses built on fields i think i make it quite clear how i feel about the environment so i'm not a fan of it myself but it's going to happen so you may as well get the part of the canal as part of that package i'm trying my hardest to keep the lens clean i've got a bit of tissue because my lens cleaner fell out the car into a puddle as i got out so apologies if the lens isn't too clear on this we've got the wind the rain it really is an awful awful day out today but we're just dropping down now you can see the lands going down you might be able to see a party out there we'll work, uh, walking along they're the second tour of the day and we're dropping now towards towards the aqueduct so here we are here's Dunnington aqueduct so I'm going to drop down into here in a second and we'll have a little walk through you you look at this quite regularly don't you yeah we uh, probably once a year we'll have a close look at it our engineers uh, uh, want us to keep an eye on it uh, there's a crack in the, the brickwork in the tunnel itself but because it's all soft clay um, it, it gives it's not worth 
of making a rigid structure because it will crack it. Yeah, allow it you won't allow any movement then obviously for the, for the structure yeah that's it that makes sense yeah yeah right got my life jacket on see you in a minute this is the uh, largest remaining structure on the canal after two tunnels were filled in, uh, well they were abandoned and filled in this is the northern portal of it it's in quite good condition it's a bit of pointing and stuff and he's doing but the bridge the brickwork seems okay just going to get a foot in inside the tunnel and see if it's sound enough to walk in oh it's much shallower here actually so the tunnel itself is 40 foot long this is quite a big one really considering the uh, the fact that it's a narrow canal you can see there's a few places where the sort of bricks have come away on the sides but otherwise it's in a it's in very good condition there's no formations on it which means the bed's not leaping up above which you often see on these things they must have a brick bottom to this this is very good standing i wasn't expecting this but i'm not sure what i'm going to find when i get to this other side you can see there is some damage to the brickwork here face looks a bit loose a bit of cracking looks like me repairs have been made at some point let's see how i can feel i'd love to see this other face there's buttresses on this side apparently yeah there we go yeah, we're losing the bottom of the bridge here, so I'm not going to go any further. But I'll put my camera out so you can see. So you've got buttresses there, look, on both sides. And you can see the uh, wings of the, the aqueduct on the side there. It's a massive structure. Quite surprising, really, considering, like I say, it's a narrow canal. So I'm going to end this video here, and I look forward to seeing you next week.